Hello team, welcome back. Since Cisco has made CML free for everyone, you can now access and train for your CCNA without any cost. In today's video, I'll show you how to deploy CML on Proxmox step by step. But that's not all, stick around until the end, because I'll also be configuring external connectivity and accessing our virtual router using SSH from outside. If you're ready to level up your networking skills, this is an opportunity you don't want to miss. Before we jump in, don't forget to subscribe, like and share to help others benefit from this incredible resource. Let's get started. First, let's prepare our files. Head over to the Cisco software website using the link below to download two ISO files, both of which are inside a zip archive. Here we need to download the image labeled bare metal deployment, which is the main deployment image. Next, download RevPlat file which contains devices images. Once downloaded, let's unzip both files and check their contents. You can see we have the ISO images we need to upload to Proxmox VE. I'll upload each file and then we can move on to the installation steps. Now, let's create a new virtual machine. I'm gonna name mine CML, but you can choose any name that works for you. Click next to proceed. In the ISO selection step, choose CML ISO image. My target storage is local, but yours might be different. Make sure to select the storage location where you uploaded both images. Leave everything else as default and click next to continue. Let's first enable the KMU agent, which helps with better integration between the VM and Proxmox. Next, we need to change BIOS to OVMF or UEFI and select the EFI storage location. Since I have local storage, I'll use local LVM for EFI storage. Once that's set, we can proceed to the next step. CML requires a minimum disk size of 32 GB. But for this lab, I'm going to allocate a bit more since I'll be running multiple labs later. If you're using SSD, make sure to check the discard option to enable trim support for better performance. Next, under Advanced Settings, set Async I.O. to Native for optimized disk performance. Once that's done, let's move on to the next step. Now let's configure CPU and memory. Adjust these settings based on your system resources, but make sure they meet CML's minimum requirements for smooth performance. Before powering on the VM, we still need to attach the RevPlat image. Go to Hardware section of your VM. Then click Add CD-DVD Drive. Select the location of your RevPlat image and add it. Now we're ready to start the VM. Once the VM boots, the initial setup and this part of installation will take some time, so be patient. All right, we're now at the configuration step. Here you can take a moment to read end user license agreement, but to keep this video concise, I'll go ahead and proceed to the next step. 
Next, you'll see deployment details, including important port numbers for accessing CML. Simply hit enter to continue. For clustering, two interfaces are required, but since we are setting up a standalone deployment, we can simply continue. Next, you'll see the hostname configuration. If you'd like, you can enter a custom hostname, but for this demo, I'll leave it as default. Now, we need to set up system credentials that we'll use to log in to CML. For this demo, I'll keep it simple and use admin as the username. However, make sure to choose a strong and secure password or the system will prompt you to do so. Next, we need to set up credentials for the CML controller. Think of it as administrative access. Once that's done, we'll move on to the next step. In the networking section, I'll select DHCP because my router is already set up to assign IP addresses dynamically. However, if you prefer a static IP, feel free to configure it manually. This screen provides a summary of all the settings we've configured so far. If everything looks good, we can confirm and proceed. Now the system is copying files for RiftPlat image. This may take some time. And that's it, installation is complete. Now we can access CML via the web UI using the server's IP address. Let's log in with the credentials we configured earlier. And there we go, we're now inside CML and everything is working perfectly. Now let's log in to controller using server's IP address with port 9090. CML controller is used for system configuration and software updates. Now that we successfully installed CML on Proxmox VE, let's move on to configuring a router to be accessible externally using a bridge. Here in CML interface, Add a router by clicking on Add Node, then selecting a router and an external connector. Now, let's connect them by right-click on the router, select Add Link, and then connect it to the external connector. We need to make some changes to the external connector. First, I will rename it. Then go to the config section and change the external connector type to system bridge. System bridge allows our virtual network inside CML to connect to the external Proxmox network. Once the configuration is complete, we can start the external connector. Next, we need to configure our router. I will rename it for clarity. After that, we can start the router. Once router is running, right-click on it and select Open Console to access CLI. In this step, let's change the router's hostname for better identification. Next, we need to configure Ethernet Interface 0 by enabling DHCP. After applying these configurations, the router should receive an IP address from the external network. To confirm, since we're in configuration mode, use the do command followed by show IP interface brief to check the interface status. Next, we need to configure SSH so we can access this router from another PC on the network.
Now that SSH configuration is completed, let's test external connectivity by pinning Google's public DNS. Our ping is successful. This confirms that this virtual router is properly connected to the internet. Next, let's go to our remote computer and SSH into our virtual router. We use PADI, my favorite open source terminal software. Open PADI and enter IP address of the router. Then, click open to establish the connection. We are successfully connected to our virtual router from the remote PC. Now, let's try pinging Google DNS to ensure everything is working smoothly. And it's successful. Now you're ready to install and get external access to your router, and you're one step closer to starting your CCNA training with FreeCML. A big shout out to the subscriber who requested this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. See you next time.